you guys. Just going to do a quick video here on my haversack, which I've had for a year, and a rucksack that I just bought. This has nothing to do with the video. This is the cat scratching post, and that's so she doesn't destroy the carpet because we don't own this house. And there's Mulky there, which has nothing to do with the video. Anyways, uh, well, first, just generalities about a haversack. I've struggled with backpacks for so long. Uh, I sweat kind of profusely. At least I think so. I don't enjoy it. So to keep my back a little drier last summer, so yeah, maybe a year ago almost now, I decided to finally go to a haversack and try it out. And worked out great in the summer. I didn't carry too much, but I'm finding in the winter with more gear and now with hunting gear and stuff too, and I've fished out of this quite a bit and stuff too. Still good fishing bag. But uh, this strap, I should put some sort of padding on it. Or should have by now, because that digs into my, uh, what's that, your lats or whatever they call it, up on your shoulders. Those muscles that come down off your neck and stuff, they get so sore from this. Like spending the whole entire day either this on one shoulder and the gun on the other and then switching back and forth. Doesn't go well. Summertime wasn't too bad. And I've been trying to keep an eye open for a rucksack. We don't have much to choose from up here, unfortunately. But... My favorite store in Yellowknife, Weaver and DeVore, which is kind of like your typical old-fashioned general store, merchandiser, camp sort of setup. Anyways, there's this, it's just a $42 rucksack, but it's world famous, is the brand name. And it's got a flap with a pocket built into it, which is going to be great for maps and hunting and fishing regulations and that sort of thing. Two side pockets. It's got a drawstring in the top that the flap covers, which is nice. And then it's got this little pocket on the back, which I think I'll probably... I may or may not put my tinder and stuff in there and my fire kit. We'll see. But right now, none of it's waterproof. When I bought this, none of this was waterproof. But I ended up treating the whole thing with this snow seal. I also did like my uh, my blundstones. I didn't do my new hiking boots with them. I uh, haven't had to worry about them yet. They've seemed to be beating up still, and I do them once in a while with a little bit of fluid film. But what I'm gonna use when I do the rucksack here, so this is wax dressing specifically for cotton, and they recommend doing it like a double boiler, so I'll probably do that. And a lot of people use a rag. I'm just going to use an old paintbrush, and it seems way, way easier to do it that way. But it'll be pretty similar to the snow seal, and you can even make this stuff yourself pretty cheap with like a beeswax uh, toilet gasket ring and some linseed oil. But I had snow seal, so that's what I used on this. I had this when I was out moose hunting one time, and there was probably about this much bilge water in the boat that was all back in the uh, the stern until we stopped the boat and it leveled out again. And I freaked out thinking everything's going to be soaking wet. And even with the amount of abuse that the bottom of this thing takes throwing it around here and there, I didn't have one drop of water come through the bag. So, I'll be doing similar to this. And then I'll have something that's waterproof slash sweatproof down the back here. I mean, I could get like a heavy pack frame, but uh, I just wanted a nice little rucksack for, for day trips. Plus a little extra just in case it gets stuck somewhere enough that I could... Uh, live out of it for a couple of days in an emergency and keep myself comfortable. Another nice thing I like about this, and it's hard to find a backpack that doesn't have big padded straps, which comfort-wise is probably fine, but there is nothing worse than being out hunting. That was one thing I liked about the haversack. I can bring the, uh, the gun up to my shoulder no problem with the haversack and with my other backpack I've got, which is now just going to be used for back and forth to work. As soon as I would bring the gun up to my shoulder, with a, with a big thick pad and it's got all kinds of crazy buckles and chest strap and snaps for this and that and hydration line mounting points it was no good. And this has a hip line too, that's all you really need. And the nice thing, it's all metal buckles and stuff other than uh, the snap buckles. It's repairable in the field. I mean if I keep a sewing kit with me and a candle, and I've always got candles anyways, you can always rub those on and then warm it up over a campfire to re-waterproof it. But that's not what the video is about. This is kind of my, also, I got emptied out anyways, my everyday carry. So this is the uh, little woods haversack that I have been and will probably still continue to use for some things. Maybe 
mission specific, but let's see what we got in here this time of year. Leather gloves. And it's a little bit of a mess right now, but that's good. We're cleaning things up here now. Emergency candles, plastic bag. So a lot of this stuff may be specific to hunting as far as things like the bag and the gloves go for field dressing. Mostly rabbits. I don't wear gloves when I'm field dressing birds, but I've heard that uh, tularemia or whatever it's called is kind of up here. So, And some of the much cordage that's hanging around in most of my kits. This just came with uh, my fishing line, but it's got some good knots in it that I don't have memorized yet. More cordage. Some Gorilla Tape. This stuff is fantastic. Not so much the camouflage stuff, but I had some left, so I threw it in my bag. It's only a small roll. doesn't weigh much. But, uh, man, you want to talk about sticky. It is way, way better, in my opinion, than duct tape. Top-notch for uh, patching canoes, too, so I do a lot of paddling try to more than I did this summer but bicycle tube so this has all kinds of uses of course you guys know most of them you can cut these up into little elastic bands called ranger bands uh, you, know, you can I don't have my zippo with me anymore on my person I just have it as a keepsake now but you can use this to seal up your zippo it's great fire starter like if you've got something that's having a really hard time catching that burns like mad uh, I've got a pencil does this even work anymore? Oh yeah, I guess I got a lighter in there. My little Bushnell binoculars. These are actually a lot clearer picture than some bigger, more expensive ones I've got. So I keep these in there for hunting and just checking things out. Uh, backup flashlight. Oh. Mooselor. Oh, well, don't really need that out. That's where that went. There's one pocket empty. And then clipped on the inside here. I always keep a, a bigger knife on me and a multi-tool all the time. But uh, this little buck knife, forget the model on it, but does that ever do a nice job on small game? It's a really nice little blade. You should always have extra blades. And I've got another plastic bag. Um, some more cordage. And another set of gloves. Some more bicycle tube. I should lay this out so we can see it a bit better, but oh well. I've got some matches, some decent matches with a piece of the striker and this. I've got more striker underneath the cap, just in case. Can't have too many ways to start fire. Bear bell, that's a leftover from summer. Another candle. It's kind of a neat little base. Haven't had to use that one yet, obviously. I've got one of these diamond and brass uh, honing sticks for the knife. I haven't used it in the field, but it, I like knowing it's in there if I am stuck somewhere for a while. This is neat. So my brother-in-law brought this back for me from Turkey when he was working there, flying the CL-215 water bombers for Buffalo. It's got, uh, I call it the goat slayer, but somebody handmade this. And it's got... A serrated blade. I don't think it's going to focus. And it also has, and like the nail nicks are all handmade in it and stuff. He told me what it's made out of as far as what they used for raw materials. And then that's more like a like a clipper or a drop point or something. With a, it's a bit of a convex grind actually with a secondary bevel. Yeah, it's actually a kind of a neat little knife. Should touch it up. There's another bag empty, or section of my bag, I should say. In the main pocket, I've got beef jerky, pilot biscuits, which are basically commercially available at hardtack. I'll put the stuff in the back just so we can get a look at the pile. And we've got a couple of packets of different flavored oatmeal in here. Just add water and heat. Got some utensils. I wonder why this stuff was getting heavy on my back. Uh, I've got a can of Spam just in case, even if it freezes, you can dig that out and cook it and get some fat in you. I've got some tea bags. Just because you never know what you're going to kill and grill, you should have some seasoning in there. So i got some Old Bay. In the future I'll probably just end up going with the salt and, seasoned salt and pepper mix that I use at home. So I have my little bush cup. 
be nice to have something with a folding handle, but this is what I have for now, so that's what I use. There's that. Why I carry this around, I'm not too sure, because I now have it downloaded on my phone. But yeah, that's our hunting regulations for up here. And... Uh, my fishing regulations. And Prosperous Lake map from the last time I was up there scouting for moose. And I guess I left that in there. Sometimes you can pack too much stuff and lose things in it. I've got my Gerber folding saw that comes with two blades. Oh, didn't want to lose these. There should be another one in there somewhere, yep. I've got my tag, so I've got my moose tag. 